Hey everyone, this is James from Anemone Aquascaping. I'm here in my gallery pretty late at night and I just wanted to make this off the cuff sort of uh, vlog style video and just talk about what's going on with my six foot aquarium behind me. Um, I hope it's not off putting or uh, controversial to some people, but I'll explain from the beginning about everything that's going on here. All right, so we're here in front of my six foot 180p aquarium. Um, this aquarium was built about four months ago, I would say. And um, the original idea was to house my severums and my ultimate angel fish. Um, to kind of go back a ways, I had gotten these severums maybe eight months ago or so. And um, there were six of them in total. And later on, I had a friend that um, gave me these ultimate angel fish. And it kind of threw a bit of a wrench in my plan, um, just in the fact that I wasn't intending on keeping them. But since they were F1s, meaning they're bred by two wild caught angelfish, um, these have been so easy and nice to care for, and I thought it was a nice opportunity to keep them. So going forward here, um, as the severums have been growing, they've started getting quite a bit more aggressive but anyway um, they started picking on each other and it didn't appear like they were starting to attack the the altums at all but then i start to see all this fraying on their dorsal fins and you can see how that some of them are kind of beat up a little bit especially this one on the left um, one of the severums got so beat up that it looked like he was going to die Um, so that's one issue that's been with this aquarium and you can see now that the severums aren't even in the aquarium and I'll explain that too. The other thing that happened was that this aquarium was meant to be separate from the gallery. The gallery was originally upstairs and this was just supposed to be my kind of fun play fish tank. Um, Obviously, if you've been following along, that's kind of changed and all the lights are out right now except that one light screen. But um, all of my gallery planted aquariums are down here and it kind of just seems a bit weird to just have a um, hardscape only tank. And I have to confess that even though this is the largest one, it looks the worst by far in my opinion. And it's probably just due to the fact that there's no plants in it. So. Here's what I did and here's what I'm planning to do. So obviously you can see all the severums have been removed. Um, I still have some of them and I'll kind of show you guys what's going on. But um, the plan is to, now that all the severums are out of the aquarium, you see I've thrown some plants in here. Um, this is going to become a, another high-tech planted aquascape. Um, so if you can kind of vision it right now, I actually designed this hardscape to be a high-scape, a high-tech planted aquascape. Um, it's basically a V-shaped composition, and all that was holding it back was the fact that the sand was going all the way in the back, and you can see I moved most of it. It's going to be replaced with aqua soil. I had to create a barrier because some of the there wasn't going to be any separation between soil and sand. And that's the same on this case too. I moved some of the hardscape around to create a better barrier here so the soil can go in the back. I couldn't have any of these plants if I were keeping the severum. Um, if you're familiar with those fish, they love to eat plants. And I tried experimenting by adding some plants in and they completely just, um, they didn't eat them all like I thought they would, but there was no way that anything could possibly grow and stay planted just because they mess with the, the um, substrate so much and they just, you know, they're thrashing around sometimes. They get scared really easily. And with a rimless aquarium, I'm kind of worried they were going to jump out also. So I have plants that are I've taken from the other aquariums. And um, really long term, I'm going to be planning to um, set this up as a high-tech planted tank. Um, I'm really, I am on one hand really excited. I do feel kind of guilty about the severum fish, but um, I'll kind of show you 
the, you know, on their end of things and why this might be the best decision long term. Um, I'm hoping that I can kind of target feed these Altums because they are kind of small for their age. And I'm wondering if any of them were really thriving in here as it is. Um, I've noticed that now when I'm feeding them, they seem just a little bit more relaxed and easygoing. But um, let me show you guys around to the Severums. So this isn't going to be quite a good view, and they are still very unhappy with me in hiding. Um, I'm going to add more decor in here just to make them feel a little bit better. But one of them was so beat up that um, he really just needed a hospital tank anyway. The other one got a little bit beat up upon removing him from the tank. So and rather than bringing unhealthy fish to the fish store, I decided just to keep them a little bit longer, bring them back to health first. You can kind of see one of them in there, but I don't want to disturb them too much just because I know that they're very stressed still. Yeah, yeah, I want to leave them alone a little bit. But if I can zoom in, you might be able to see he has quite a blotch on his head. Oh no. Oh, that poor guy. Well, good thing there's a lid on this tank, right? So um, I'm going to try to nurse these two back to health. When they're both starting to eat, feel better again, feel a little bit more safe in there, then I will be, um, you know, bringing them to the fish store. And uh, I already know that there's someone there that's interested in them and hopefully can provide a better home for them. Yeah, so I see the Severum get startled like that, and I just can't imagine continuing to keep them in a rimless tank like this that doesn't have any hood or lid on it. Um, I've seen them kind of thrash and like almost jump like this before, but they never jumped out of the aquarium, and I just feel like it's almost a matter of time before you know, I find one of them on the floor. Um, on the other hand, these Ultims have been like so chill, <laughs> and I don't really worry about them jumping out at all they've been like perfectly fine so here I have some um, Dr. Baz Lear's bio fish food this is usually the standard staple dry food that I give the Altums not so sure if I'm going to get them to come out but I thought I'd give it a try at least usually they have like a corner that I go to feed them, and it's in the opposite corner that they're currently in. But sometimes I get, oh, it looks like I got their attention a bit. Uh, I'm trying to train them to kind of feed them from this area on the, on the top right. Um, well, maybe they haven't quite learned yet. There's a lot of interest though. I found that now that it's just them in the tank, they're much more likely to take food. Um, it would kind of be the situation where like they would be interested but then the Severums would just kind of get in their way and they would kind of just work around the Severums and kind of wait. So I'm trying to up their feeding. I used to just feed them once a day um, and you know it was hard to keep track of what each fish was getting since there's so many of them but I'm hoping now I can kind of target feed these guys better and get them to put some size on. Um, you know, obviously they're in a 180, so it's quite a large tank, but you can still tell that they're not even close to full size. And, um, you know, I want to make sure I take advantage of their youth so that way I can get them to grow really large. But, um, yeah, now they're going to be following me around for more food. So here's the plan. Um, so as you, as I mentioned, I already prepped this area. I also closed off the corners here and here too. And um, so now I'm going to be putting soil in this area and uh, this area. And what I should say first, by the way, is that this is not gonna be like any layout that I've done. Um, usually I plant, set up everything right away and you know, get the whole tank started. Um, for this layout, I'm gonna be doing it like one step at a time, really gradually. Um, and you know that's going to go for everything. The lighting is going to be put up really slowly. 
Um, right now I have these lights at like 20% power unless I'm filming and they're only on for a few hours since there's no plants. I'm just going to be increasing that really slowly. Um, I'm going to add a CO2 tank and I'll show you guys that in a minute. But I'm just going to add a little bit at a time very slowly. I'm going to be adding plants very slowly too because there's so many that I'm going to need. And um, you know I'm just going to kind of let it gradually happen here. So this layout may not look like what it's intended to look like for many months or maybe even a year or so, but this is going to be very long term for me. Um, I will mention also I'm planning on getting another light screen um, custom made for this aquarium because it just kind of looks dreary with that background, especially when I start making it a planted tank. So let me show you the CO2. Um, I just got this today. I didn't want to get a five pound CO2 cylinder just because it, um, well, let me show you. So I just put a five pounder right next to it to give some perspective here, but this is a typical five pound cylinder. This is what I use in all of my aquariums currently. Um, I had a feeling if I use this on the 180 centimeter, it's going to run empty in like a month or two probably. Um, I really had my eyes on 10 pound cylinders until I realized they're not very common. So um, it's hard to see in the dark, but there's a 20 pounder. And I'll put this one right next to it so you can see them both. Um, I got pretty lucky here where they were willing to trade one of my five pounders and I basically just had to pay for the CO2 to fill it. Um, so I know the 20 pounders can usually be quite expensive. So I'm going to be running this CO2 tank for the 180 centimeter. Um, and I've, you know, if you watch my video where I talked about the tank and the stand, you know I kind of bashed Waterbox on doing their three foot stand, which I just think is ridiculous for maintenance. But I got to hand it to them on this. It's at least possible for me to fit the CO2 tank in here. Um, if it were a normal cabinet height, there's no way it would fit. I'd have to have it outside of the cab of the cabinet altogether. So props to them on that. So I'll be adding CO2 to, the, to this tank probably in the next day or so, maybe even tonight after this video, just so these plants that I have in the holding tank right now are going to be able to continue growing and don't have any adjustment period. Um, these were all taken from my current displays, so I, you know, they're used to this really nice high-tech CO2 environment already, so I don't want them to kind of die off or anything like that. Um, as far as the plants that I have, I have some, a lot of bulbitis. Um, I have some needle leaf java fern, but not nearly a moth. I have some right here and right there. Sorry, it's hard to see that. Um, I would take more from the 120 centimeter, but it's kind of covered in algae right now. And the primary reason I'm trying to slowly introduce everything to this aquarium is because I really don't want to deal with algae in this tank. Um, at least not like huge amounts of it that's, you know, hard to deal with. So that's why I'm trying to slowly introduce the light and the CO2 and everything else to it. Um, we have a, quite a few Anubis species there. There's also some mini bulbitis. Um, I'm planning on getting more Anubis from Cuboid Nature Aquarium, but I just, um, I'm waiting for that order to come in. And then there's some Crypt Parva up here as well. Other plants I'll be adding to this would be a lot of the, um, a lot of the Rotalas that I have in here. I'm just gonna let it grow out in this um, 60 centimeter tank take some of those trimmings and slowly add them to this tank in the back corners. I'll probably have red, reds on the outside and green on the inside, probably. I'm not sure yet. And, but I'll just take a little bit at a time and just keep planting it and replanting it until I get full coverage. Again, that might take a long time. Um, I might add a few other plants like um, Hygrophila pinnatifida or I was thinking about trying um, Cypress sulfuri, but um, you know, I'm not so sure yet. I'm I'm letting I'm going to let this kind of evolve and become something as it you know as it goes. I do have to fix some of the hardscape too. Um, when I was trying to catch the fish, I had to disassemble it. So like this piece isn't exactly how it was. 
the stones aren't exactly the way they were. Um, so there's some tweaking to do long term here, but I am really excited about this. I think it kind of ties the whole gallery together. Um, it's probably for the best of the fish, although I really hate the idea of me getting fish that I don't keep long term. Um, I never have this problem when it comes to like my smaller fish or my shrimp colonies, which I've had for several years, but um, I think I was maybe a little too impulsive with the Severums or just life probably happened and you know I had to change my game plan here, but hopefully this will be a really nice long-term aquascape that I can keep for hopefully many years. Um, this layout is going to be not permanent, but like once it's all set up, um, I don't think I want to take this down anytime soon just because it's so much hard work to do. Well, that's it for me today. So thank you guys for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe or share the video with others. Um, and I'll be sure to post more updates about this tank as I start doing some of the work on it. And um, I'll have to start talking about this tank in the background here that I forgot to cover. <laughs> so there will be a lot of videos about that coming out soon too. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.